Griffball. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Goose Checka from the popular Griffball website, griffballhub.com. And I'm Cal from the same site. So we are here to talk to you guys today about, you know, what else but Griffball. Side changes. What's Griffball? <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, right. So Griffball is a neutral assault game type in Halo Reach, started out in Halo 3, and basically there's red and there's blue, and you have a hammer and sword, that's pretty much it, and you try to plant the bomb in the other person's spawn. That's kind of what it comes down to. So in short, it is the best virtual reality sports game played within a first person shooter. So. Yeah, that's pretty descriptive right there. And lots of hugging. We like, we like to hug each other very much. Aww. All right, so here's kind of a, a quiz for you guys. And I have some swag here. I have some Griff Ball avatar armor and a Griff Ball bomb prop. Can anybody tell me where the term Griff Ball originally came from? Yeah, Reverse Blue. Reverse Blue Season 5. Sorry. OK, I hear a lot. I hear Reverse Blue. Season 5 is not correct. Sorry. Sarge, OK, but who can be the most specific? Can season somebody... 4. Um... I think episode, uh, episodes one or two, when he goes, this is the best game since Griffball. Can anybody yep. be more specific than that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, it's just, uh, sorry, it's shooting at Griff, and it says, best game since mm -hmm. Griffball. But I mean, can anybody uh, give me the exact number or title of the... No. No? Okay, Lady in the Red Shirt, would you like a, a, a ball prop or armor? Ball. Ball? Okay. Come on up. Oh. All right, nice. Oh. That's actually very, very close. Um, like you all said, you know, Sarge said, this is the best game for the Griff Ball. And it was actually in episode 59, Hunting Season, which is the second episode in season four. So that is where it comes from. And a little, little piece that Bernie said about it. Um, at, at the time when they said it, the Griff Ball didn't exist. They had no idea what Griff Ball was, what it could be. It was really just a gag because everybody knows that when Griff's life is miserable, everybody's just a happier, happier person. And when Sarge is happy, everybody's happy except Griff. So, all right. The next time that Griff Ball appeared was the heroic. Yes, the heroic map. Okay, I always get mixed up. The heroic map pack when they made a do-it-yourself video featuring all the items and forge that you could have. They made the foundry court and it was completely empty. And they originally had um, it set up so where Griff would pick up the flag, and he created the most the laziest game ever. He picked up the flag, he moved two feet, and he planted the flag. And that's kind of how it got its start. Unfortunately, it actually got cut from the do-it-yourself video because apparently Simmons gag of launching a dumpster and splattering Griff was more entertaining. So that you'll actually never, ever see it. However, they, at the end, they had this court. They had a full court, and Bernie began to wonder, you know, what would Griff Ball look like? What is Griff Ball? What, what can we do with this, with this forge? We have this arena and everything. And originally, it was with shotguns and grenades, and you could pick up weapons, and thankfully, they switched it out to hammers and swords, and you couldn't pick up weapons anymore. And that is how uh, Griff Ball actually got started. Yeah, when they first created the game type, um, they wanted to differentiate the bomb carrier from everyone else in the course. You'd be able to identify them more easily. They ended up switching him to orange, and they thought, oh, I guess Griff Ball would be a fitting name for this because no matter what happens during the game, whether Griff gets killed by a sword, gets killed by a hammer, or actually plants the bomb and explodes, Griff still dies. So it seems to be perfect. So this is actually really, really interesting. Um, it's kind of like our, our cultural history. This is all the data from the very first it's a tournament, because it wasn't quite a league, but it's the original eight tournament. And if you, I don't know if you can see them, but there are some very uh, familiar names on there. Great sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, You know, Bernie Burns is on there, Luke McKay is on there. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Joe Pro, Pros. Uh, so a lot of people, Obo Crazy is on there, and so that's like all of their stats, and we actually have um, a lot more of the stats from the original eight. And that's kind of where Griff Ball got started. At the Team SG won, actually won the original eight tournament. And that was in December of 2007. And January of 2008 was the start of the very first official Griff Ball League. And it's referred to as Winter League 08. Oh, 07, isn't it? No, Winter League yes. 08, yes. 
If you're interested more in the ancient history of Griff Ball, we actually have a 13-part series on the history of Griff Ball and Halo 3 on GriffBallHub.com. Yeah, it's, it'll walk you through every single league and who was on the teams and what did what. And so it's uh, very intense if you're interested in, in the ridiculous history of Griff Ball. And so the disease spreads. Three months after the original launch of Winter League 08, Bungie announced that they would be introducing Griff Ball into double XP matchmaking. Griff Ball was the third or fourth Friday of every month, and it was on for about 96 hours. And that is actually how Cal and I here got into Griff Ball. We started playing in the matchmaking, we was so much fun, we spent all weekend just grinding out games after games, you know, 20 hours, no eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom, nothing, just playing Griff Ball. Yeah, our goal every weekend was to get 500 experience points, so that's not, in double XP, that means it's not 250 games, it's 250 wins every weekend to get the next grade general. But we're so good, you know, it wasn't, no, no worries. Um, <laughs> So they, they put it into matchmaking, and it was a huge success. By Summer League 08, which is only six months after the initial launch of Griff Ball, the Griff Ball League had over 200 teams in it. So you figure 200 teams, an average of five people each. Well, where's the mathematician? I'm sure he can do that. For us. I want to do it. <laughs> 18. So Griff Ball just continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger until these lovely places came along. Griff Ball was getting so big that .com really couldn't hold on to everything that Griff Ball had to offer. So these amazing websites, griffball.org, which is actually founded by Leah there in the back. Griffball.com, which was founded by Pubtastrophe, also known as H2O Camper. These two community sites came into being because while griffball.com offered us the ability to schedule our games, record our games, track our stats, and really run the league, there really wasn't any other meat to it, like interviews with the players, or tips and tricks, tutorials, places to submit maps, and a, a really way to become involved in the community rather than posting just your scores. So these sites really helped push Grip Ball out um, even further than where it was. And then the, the next Grip thing, uh, there was a debate between whether we should go with uh, Anne Grunty's old-fashioned sterilized nipples or the Grip Ball action figure. And Todd McFarlane wisely chose the Griff Ball action figure, um, which for us as Griff Ballers was really, really exciting because you know when you're when you consider yourself a Griff Baller, you consider yourself kind of a reject of the shooty Halo world. And to think that people were taking enough interest in what we did and what we loved to actually make an action figure, to actually spend money on us, it was kind of beyond comprehension. And so the uh, the next part, the next slide was PAX 2009, which was a, a really, really big deal for us because it was the very first ever Griff Ball panel. On the panel, we had Bernie Burns, of course. We had Leo. We had uh, two AGLA admins. We had Caleb, or Caleb Loves You. And we also had a member from the Hub as well. And basically, they just kind of talked about what Griff Ball was and what we did and the process that we all went through with the leagues and how to sign up. And we also presented a really awesome highlight reel that I'm still very giddy about. And uh, you can actually see right here with Caleb, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> and he's got the tie-dye shirt, you know, he doesn't do that anymore, <laughs> uh, the, the signed action figures there. So that was, that was really exciting. It was presented by Griffle Hub because we filmed it and we did all that. And that was kind of our first official foray into the, I don't know, the real world of uh, making Griff Ball bigger and better than it was. Oh, and in that last film, you saw Bernie holding a bomb. And that bomb is actually made out of uh, paper mache. No explosives were used. And it was made by one of our community members named Captain Redbeard. And what we did is we brought it to PAX. We had all of RT and we had Bungie Center. And we actually auctioned it off for Extra Life, which is uh, a charity kind of like Child's Play. I got to say, it was probably really awkward bringing that bomb all the way to Seattle when you had to check your luggage and asked you what's in there. I I'm guessing he kind of tried it lightly. Uh, nothing. It's nothing. Or when we had to send it to Canada to the person who bid on it. It went for about $300 and the person who wanted to live in Canada, so I had to write a declarations form uh, saying what it was. I said, arts and, arts and crafts, I didn't want to say bomb, so yeah. And then really, Griffel just kind of went along. It kind of went on its steady course, it did its own thing, and really the next big thing that happened for us was the transition to Reach. And I will never, ever forget, you know, we're all getting psyched for Reach, we're like, yeah, Reach, whatever. And then we get an email in my inbox, and it's from Bernie Burns. And I'm like, holy shit. Uh, and I said, hey, you know, you guys are doing Griff Ball stuff, that's great. Would you guys want to create the Griff Ball playlist for Bungie? Yes. Um, is there any other response to that question? So for about a couple months, we 
just slaved away on the playlist. We had 15 maps at launch. Each map had two different game types, and we had stuff like Banshee Ball, which is Grip Ball with Banshees. We, uh, Jetpack was originally set to launch. Uh, we also had Blarg Ball in there, which is in there right now. And we had some, just some uh, hand egg. We had Smash Ball, which is like hitting a golf with a golf club instead of a hammer. And, and then Bunch is like, hey, this is really great, but we only want three. So we cut it down. We're like, oh, OK. So we set it off. Then they had the matchmaking playlist. And it was, it's really different. If you play Halo 3 Grip Ball, you'll notice there's a big difference in Halo Reach Grip Ball. And a lot of people had a hard time adjusting to it. We actually lost a lot uh, of people because of it, because they didn't want to make that transition. On the other hand, we had a lot of people come into the league um, because this was their first time playing Rage, and they're like, hey, what's Griff Ball? And since it has its own playlist, it's a lot more popular now because you don't have to go search for it, you don't have to catch it on Double XP Weekend, and you don't have to wait a month to be able to play a game unless you're in the league. One of the most exciting things about the playlist is that every single map and game type that's in there was created by people in the Grip Ball community. So anybody who is a forger or anyone who just wants to mess around with settings or try something new and unique, uh, on the Hub we have a forum set up where people can submit their maps and game types. Uh, we have someone on staff, uh, Nuclear Taco 42 he is our uh, cartographer on the site, so he goes through and he looks at every map that's submitted, he gives feedback to the creators and sees how we will play, and then sometimes we take those community-made maps and run tournaments on the site, so that's how we determine what is going to get sent to Bungie, is we take what the community submitted, and then that is what gets shipped off. So all of the maps and game types that are in there, I mean, they weren't made by Bungie, they weren't made by Rooster Teeth, they were made by ordinary Grip ballers and Halo players and fans. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. It's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Extraordinary. And then there was the PAX East panel, which I was definitely the most excited about because I actually got to be on it. Um, and the panel itself was less than a month after the playlist launched. So it was the most insane, crazy, perfect timing. And we really featured how much Grip Ball had changed. We showed another highlight reel using all of the armor abilities and all the different things that you can do and reach and just how much Grip Ball has evolved over the last three years. It's hard to believe it has been around for three years. I've been told by people in matchmaking that Grip Ball is only a year old, uh, which I laugh at. Not at them, I need myself, because I don't want to be me. Um, yeah, so the panel we had, I'm sure you guys all recognize Bernie Burns on the far left there. Right next to him is Jessica Shea, she's also known as B.S. Angel, and she's a member at Halo Waypoint. And then myself, Cal, and on the far right is Green Team Tex, who was the admin for the AGLA at the time. So it was just really exciting, again, to get that kind of recognition of, hey, you know, we're real people. We may not shoot guns, but, you know, we can, we can hit stuff really, really hard, and we're really good at it. So give us some time to talk about how good we are with sharp, pointy objects. And then, of course, to, if you don't quite feel the love for Griff Ball yet, you just have to kind of take a look around. Waypoint did an entire series with the bomb prop, the hammer prop, the sword prop, uh, the Griff Ball t-shirt. You know, Rooster Teeth themselves, they have, there's the orange shirt, which comes in girl fit now. I don't know if everybody knows that, but that's awesome, not just boy fit. You can actually get your gamer tag across the back if you want. There's the polo shirt for guys who are looking, you know, particularly spiffy. There's the Kilgrave shirt, and there's the original shirt, and it just there's just so much Griffo merchandise out there for something that really is such a tiny little little part of the population. And I'm sorry, can you not see here? <laughs> so. Yeah, when you go to a convention with Rooster Tooth and assign their merchandise, the Griffball shirts are always the very first thing to sell out. So if you ever want a Griffball shirt, you have to get there bright and early on the first day, or else they're going to be gone quick. Yeah, I didn't believe it either, but we went there for PAX, I think it was PAX 2010, to get a Griffball shirt just to have everybody signed. And it was, it was there the second day, and the only thing they had left, they had two extra large orange Griffball athletic shirts left, and that was it, after just 24 hours being, being there. So that was really, really cool. Okay, so cool story, bro, but how do I grip ball? So uh, as part of my grip ball duties, I actually do work on griffball.com. And if you go to the front page of griffball.com, there's a little link there that says, um, have a question, ask it here, which then links you to a form where you can actually submit your question. That question comes to me. And we've had this up for about a year, and there have been over 600 questions submitted, and I have answered them all. And the number, the number one question is, how do I grip ball? And Griff has two Fs, so I spell it always two Fs. So to save hopefully myself from a couple others and from anybody else making that same mistake, 
there's several ways that you can grip ball. There are two leagues. There is the Good Games League, which is won by GriffBallHub.com. That's us. It is a recreational grip ball league. So basically, it's not super serious. It's just for fun. We're really welcoming to new teams, to people who are just in it for the lulls, you know. And we offer things like achievables, which are grip ball achievements that you can earn during the game. And these achievements earn you points, and the team with the most amount of these grip points at the end of the season gets to go to the playoffs, regardless of their record. So, and, and the achievements are stuff like win but go negative, or uh, do not earn a first strike medal. Your team cannot earn a first strike medal, which is really funny when both teams are going for that achievement at the same time. Because then they end up super paranoid. Yeah, you run into each other, you come like dance around, like, oh, are you going to do it? Are you going to not? So it's just a lot of fun. It's very relaxed, um, and that we're all just about having fun. Uh, Griffball.com is the other league, the American Griffball League of America, which is the Rooster Teeth uh, bound site. And this is uh, the competitive league. If you are interested in proving that you are the grip ball shit, if you are all that at a bag of chips with grip ball, this is where you want to be. They do take it a lot more seriously than we do. Um, they really crack down on, on stuff like that. And they will you know, brag and trash talk and that kind of thing. But it, it is for the more competitive person. So if you're just looking to kick back with your buddies, you know, GGL is probably the best place for you. If you're looking to actually compete on a I mean, I want to say compete on a competitive scale, that's really the only way to say it. Uh, this is where you're going to want to go. And if you're interested, actually, in signing up for Griff Ball League right now, go to griffballhub.com. The sign-ups for the games league are going on right this minute. So if you have a team, we have sign-ups open through next Wednesday. So if you're interested, check out the site. So everybody should sign up. Should sign up. I'll look. Of course, if you don't want to play in a Griff Ball League, the matchmaking playlist is open 24-7. There's usually at least a 1,000 people in there. Um, we recommend that when you play in matchmaking, you go in with a full team of four, because sometimes you go in by yourself, your teammates aren't communicating, there's a lot of betrayals, or occasionally you'll run into griefers who stat pad in there. But we highly recommend that if you want to have your best time in the matchmaking playlist, go in with a team of four. And a lot of people will tell us, well, I don't have four people that want to play grip ball with me. Like, I have friends, don't get me wrong, but they just don't want to play grip ball. <laughs> and that's okay. And really, the number one way to get grip ballers on your friends list is to join one of the leagues. Even if you don't have a team, both leagues have a looking for a player thread, where teams go through and they try to pick up people who are looking for a team. We recently just had a mixer where we, we basically adopted out all of our rookies and found them good homes. You know, we had them spayed and neutered too, so it's all good. Um, <laughs> just kidding, that won't happen. Uh, but no, that's, that's really the best way to build your, your grip ball friends list. And that's the best way, if you want to play grip ball, to go into matchmaking, just to, just to do it that way. So how do I grip ball gooder? You know, for those who are, who are interested, whether it should be better in matchmaking or to be competitive in the leagues, the grip ball hub actually has a grip ball resource page, which is just this huge list of all these different articles, videos, tutorials, tips and tricks, about everything from the very basics, like Grip Ball 101, this is a hammer, this is how you swing your hammer, this is the physics of the hammer, to advanced stuff like how to flowers, which is when you hammer jump and pick up the ball at the same time and you go like shooting through the air. Um, how to barrel roll, which is when, a specific thing you can do in Grip Ball Dash, which is only in the leagues, and because Bungie didn't like it, but you know, whatever. And, but you can barrel roll, or I'm sorry, you can invade with the bomb. So it's a, a really different dynamic there. And, pretty much everything you could ever want to know about how to get better as an individual, as a player. We even have stuff written by captains about the best way to contact the other team, form etiquette, pretty much anything you could possibly ever want. Hopefully, and if it's not there, let us know and we'll get it there. And of course, the most important part of the Ball is the community. And I don't say that because I love everybody, but I do. But when you think about it, Rift Ball only exists because people love it. For example, you know, if Rooster Teeth, if their forms crashed for some reason for six months, it would be horrible, but Rooster Teeth would still be solid. They would still be fine. They would still be able to produce videos and put them out on YouTube and stuff like that. If the grip ball community collapsed, it would there'd be nothing left. So we are incredibly dedicated to our community, and we are so lucky that they are so dedicated to us as well. Um, I think one of my favorite things is the unicorn with the, with the salt ball. That was made by a gentleman named 42, or a very easy target. He was uh, listening in on one of our Grip Ball podcasts that we do, and has a whiteboard, so he drew that in the whiteboard during the podcast. Uh, you may also recognize the little uh, comic, that's by Leaf Shinobi 7, who's a longtime Grip Ball and a longtime RT member, and he occasionally draws um, Grip Ball comics. And of course, in the, the bottom left there, on your right, it was the Grip Ball meetup at Halo Fest at PAX last, or this couple months ago. 
and it was just really cool to get everybody together. And you know, when you spend so much time with people, you know, there's people there that I've known for three years and never met, and, and got to meet for the first time. So it was really, really exciting. We also have, uh, as part of our community, we have a group ball racing league. There's no hammers at all. You just get on a mongoose or a warthog and you, you race. So, and we also have a poker night, uh, a weekly poker night. So everybody just comes in, we load up full house poker and we just chill and hang out for a couple hours while we do play poker. Um, so there's a, a lot that you can do in the community, even if griff ball isn't your main thing. Our forums are very active. Um, like right now the Skyrim thread is just obliterated with people talking about uh, how excited they are. And of course the last picture is from Halo Fest. It was the uh, community panel, which I also was very lucky to be a part of. And that was really cool. I mean, and people said Griff Ball won't take you places. <laughs> so the future of Griff Ball. Uh, this is something that's very near and dear to our heart because ask any Griff Baller and they will tell you that the league is going to end next season. Every year for the past three years we've been, been predicting the, the death of Griff Ball. Um, I guess we're pretty pessimistic people. Uh, but the future actually looks pretty good. We uh, obviously we have the Griff Ball Matchmaking Playlist, which we are working with Waypoint right now to continue to maintain and update. Once the title update is active, we're going to be submitting new game types uh, to deal with the bleed through. And I mean, bleed through to us is like taking out armor log for an MLG player. Like it is a huge, huge deal. We're like jumping up and down about it. So we can't wait to see how that's all going to work out. We also have the Highlight Frenzy, which is our monthly Griffon Highlight Reel. And we take clips from matchmaking. So if you do something really, really cool, just save the, uh, save the film, or like take a little clip of it, I guess. Put it in your file share, tag it as Waypoint GB, as in Griff Ball, or Griff Ball Hub. And uh, our owner, site master, whatever, pup taster, he will go through and he picks them and he puts them in the highlight reel, and they're put up every month on Waypoint. And speaking of Waypoint, uh, when we were at Halo Fest and PAX, we actually got a chance to speak with the creative director of 343, Josh Holmes. And he, we asked him, so will there be Griffith on Halo 4? Obviously, we know he's not going to answer us, but he said that uh, the Waypoint community has a lot of really strong Griffith fans. And it's true. Uh, Jessica Shea slash BS Angel, she plays on the team Green Army Junior. Uh, Vera Heem, who's also a community manager, plays on We Roll Lasso, which is another Griffball team. Uh, Tad Panda? Sam Panda? Sam Panda! He also plays on Lasso, and there's a couple other people. Dr. Mouse on Green Army Junior. Yeah, Dr. Mouse is also on Green Army Junior. So there's a lot of community members that actually work at 343 who are also active in the Griffball community, which is great news for us, because we kind of feel like we have, we have advocates, which we didn't really have before. But uh, speaking of the Highlight Frenzy, like I said, it comes out every month. It's the fourth Friday of every month. And as you now know, it is the third Saturday. But we have it for you guys. We're going to show it to you early, so you guys will see it a week before anybody else. You, Waypoint hasn't even seen it yet. So I hope you enjoy it. The guest vocals on there was Brian Simon. If you don't, not quite familiar with him, he does a lot of parody songs, and he also did the Griff Ball for the Win song, which I'm sure we could all sing, right? Yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to hear you singing. No, no, we really would. <laughs> um, uh, so that pretty much does it for our presentation, and we were just wondering if people might have any questions for us. And if not, I might entice people with some codes, if you have a question. Give me a hammer code. I will give you a hammer code if you come up here. Could you phrase out the time? Will you give me a hammer code? <laughs> I mean, seriously, going into the forums is really your best bet. We have uh, on Griffle Hub a forum called Looking for a, a Team, or you can also just post an entirely new, new thread saying, hey, I'm new, I would like someone to help me out. We have a really, really helpful community. Um, it's really actually quite cute, because Cal and I have been around since 2008, and so we're like the oldest geezers left. And we had a lot of newbies come in when Reach started, and it's really cute because now they're the veterans. You know, they've been around for a whole year and they've got their big boy pants on. And they're really anxious to help people out, to, to be that veteran, to be that mentor. That's the thing, we actually have a mentor program. So if you're looking to find someone to either one-on-one -on -one teach you or to find a team to pick you up, uh, we also have that. 
if all else fails, send one of us a message and we will get you into customs. We'll get you into scrims and we will fill up your friends list with people that like to play grip ball. Yeah, that's one of the most important things too about if you want to get into grip ball is filling out your friends list with other grip ballers. That way, if you just get online at a random time, you don't get anything prearranged, you can just look at your friends list and see if there are other grip balls on, get a team of four together and go roll in the matchmaking. Would you like a prop or an armor code? <laughs> well, we have male and female armor, so. Oh, female. <laughs> I'll take the male armor. Okay, all right, I'll put that aside for you. There you go. And yeah. So, if you wanted to start playing, what? How? When are the games scheduled? I guess. Cause... You actually get to pick. Okay. Uh, like right now with the GGL signups, there are set days and set times, like Wednesdays at eight, Thursdays at nine. Sundays at 10, and so you pick the one or two that works best for you, and then you just show up once a week on that day and on that time, and you play two games a week. So and that, that's your division, but it is entirely up to you when so you want to play. Like you yeah, you can, you can always reschedule. We have a makeup week, so if you don't get a game played, you can always replay it then. Uh, you're free to play whenever you want, so if you're a normal night, it's Thursday, but everybody's free Tuesday, you are more than welcome to do it on Tuesday, too. And if you miss a game, then that's okay, you just make it up later. So yeah, if you have to miss a week, that's not a problem. And you got a question? Yeah, is it easy to sign up? It's incredibly easy to sign up. You, go, you click sign up, and you put in your name, your team's name, uh, whether you want vanilla or dash. Vanilla is what you play in matchmaking, very vanilla, I guess. Uh, Dash has armor abilities. It has evade and it has sprint. So you just pick which game type you'd prefer. You pick the knight, you enter the name of your teammates, and you click submit. Even if you're single? <laughs> if you're single, you'll want to post when you're looking for a team thread. Because if we get a single registrant, um, we don't have the ability to force people onto teams as much as we'd like to. Um, but if, if you're looking for a team, you know, feel free to reach out to us um, for help. We really have a, a pretty good idea of who's looking for a team and not, and we can always help people place. But yeah, if you're an individual, please don't sign up by yourself. Funny story, when we were at PAX East this year, um, there was one person who asked a question at the Gripfall panel saying, I've been trying to get on teams before, but I haven't been able to find a team yet. You know, can you guys help me out, get, point me in the right direction? And then later in the day, we were like, oh, you were the guy who was asking about a team, right? Yeah, why don't you just join our team? That'd be easiest. You just roll with us. And now he's on our team. Yeah. So he's, he's a regular starter with us. So I mean, basically just ask. If you're looking for a team, that's all you gotta do is just ask. <laughs> So if we are starting a new team, is there like a list somewhere of like all the team names that have already been used? Mm -hmm. We have a list of all the teams who have already registered. Okay. Um, but I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to repeat a team name. We have some pretty um, interesting and very unique people in the Gripball community, and they're very creative with what they come up with. Yeah. Can you give us some examples? Well. Our team, well, Goose and I live in Washington, D.C., so our team name is the Ways and Means Committee, yeah. which was the most boring team name we could come up with, and that's how we were trying to be funny. I think one of my favorites is Kittens with Spikes. Yes, that's an awesome name. Uh, I think we have Rainbows and Unicorns. Uh, there was something about a food group. I don't, lots of food groups. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. Uh, some inappropriate ones that I don't feel comfortable talking about. And, uh, yeah. One of the oldest team names is one I still love. It's called Grunts of Fury. Their, uh, their symbol for their team is a grunt, and they photoshopped on a giant hammer. It's very cute. Do you have any uh, favorite um, Gripwell maps? I know there are some that, that curve up. Some that... Oh, you're talking about Concave. Uh, Concave is the one that, that does curve. It's fun. The thing is, I like the map, but Evolved is probably the least favorite game type just because it's a little bit slower than everything else, because you've got this giant map that you don't have any, um, you can't barrel roll with the bow, so it's a little tougher for the runner. I would say, however, my favorite map is Cliffside, and that actually is an evolved map. So it's one that has like the, the natural rock formations along the edges. Um, that was probably my favorite. I, uh, I prefer all the Blurred Fall maps, because I think Blurred Fall is how Grid Fall should be played, because it's so hardcore that there are no walls. So if you don't watch where you're going, you're just going to fall off the map. That's, that's what I love the most. And, and my favorite part of all the Lard Ball is when the elites go Lard. It always cheers me up when I die, because I get to hear the elites scream. Um, how, how does uh, you guys mention there's one where there's like uh, Red Ball Banshees? Mm -hmm. How does that? 
Well, it's not in matchmaking right now, but we play it occasionally when we want to some laughs. Um, pretty much, it's out in the water. There are three islands in the water, and each one, there are two islands where the goals are. They have three banshees each on there and a turret for defense. Um, everybody has jetpacks so they can fly over the open water, and then the bomb spawns in the middle. So everybody jumps into banshees or flies on their jetpack to the center island, grabs the bomb, and then you turn into Griff when you grab the bomb, get the overshields and the speed and all that. And you go from there. Uh, yeah, and you can use a banshee when you have the bomb too. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you, you can either jetpack sneakily to the goal, or you can hop at a banshee and fly right over and score. Yeah. Out of all the Elite playlists, which one was your favorite? So I know I, I love Winter 08 the best of all playlists. All the seasons. Oh, seasons or playlists? Sorry. Or game time, sorry. What was your favorite game time? Oh, game time. Why don't you go with some Okay. I, I, I'm a runner when I play Griffball. Originally, we were trying to figure out positions for our teams. We just chose the person who was the worst with the hammer and kept betraying their teammates and said, okay, you get the bomb. And that was me. So my favorite game types are the ones that the runners are really powerful and an integral part of success. So I really like Griffball Dash, which you won't find in matchmaking, but you will find in our league games, where the runner can sprint with the bomb, and the runner can also roll with the bomb. And I like those extra abilities for the runner. It makes it a little more interesting for me. I think my favorite version would probably have been in Halo 3. I think it was Winter League 08. It was after they did the Melee update, but it was still... Yeah, it was, spring, yeah. was it spring? The following spring. Yeah, so it was one right after they did the uh, the Melee update, which I thought was definitely my favorite, because I, I still love Halo 3 more than Reach. Still Heart Reach, but Halo 3 is better. Yeah, one of the nice things about Halo 3 is you could, it was much easier to launch the bomb carrier around the core. I mean, you saw a few clips in the Frenzy here, but in Halo 3, you could do like three quarters of the quarter if you got a good hammer launch off. How are we doing on time? So we're not starting yeah. again. A few minutes. Few minutes? Okay. Um, can you? Are there any other questions, comments, concerns? Oh yeah, the guy in the group, Joe Pro. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I would say probably vanilla, just because that's what's picked most often in matchmaking, and that's what you're going to get the most practice on. Uh, vanilla it requires you to have a really solid set of basic skills. Uh, for example, in Dash, you can win the you can win the game without ever having to kill anyone, because you can do a double barrel roll, pass to your teammate who does another double barrel roll, and score the bomb without ever killing anybody. But vanilla requires you to learn how to tank. It makes you learn how to move as a team and work as a team and develop communication and teamwork. And it really just kind of sets the foundation um, for if you want to move on to Evolve, if you want to move on to Hand Egg, if you want to move on to Dash, it's really helpful to have that kind of that base right there. And one thing I would really like to emphasize when you're tanking a vanilla grip ball is the importance of your radar. Um, we have one requirement for joining our team, and that is you know how to use your radar. This, if you don't pay attention to the radar, it's very easy for people to get too close together. And given how powerful the hammer is, it's really easy to betray your teammates. As long as you keep an eye on your radar, you can know where your teammates are at all times. That helps a lot. All right, well, I guess that's a, about does it for us for time. So thank you all for...